What's going on guys? It's the bearded one back with another beer review. And this one is very, this is a controversial review in my heart um, because, well, we'll just, I'll just introduce the beer. Sam Adams Cold Snap. This beer has been my all time favorite beer since it was first introduced. Uh, I'm just gonna say between 2012 and 2014. Uh, I'm not sure the exact day or the exact year that it came out, but it is the annual uh, spring seasonal beer out of Sam Adams. Uh, there was one year where uh, they didn't produce it as much. I don't think they took it off the shelves. I did find some that year, but they were pushing, um, they were either pushing winter lager a little bit longer into the season, or they were trying out something in their variety packs that year. I can't remember. That That was about three years ago, I think. And then that very next year, Cold Snap came back with a vengeance. Uh, and, and it's been strong ever since. Uh, you see it everywhere on the shelves. I think they're, they're, they're pretty much preparing for summer ale now. So Cold Snap's on its way out on shelves. But you can probably still find it if you look for it. Uh, just Even just a little bit harder than going to Walmart or somewhere. Um, now to explain the controversy, they have tweaked the recipe. This beer, I did a beer fight with this beer. Uh, I direct fought this beer with Einstock Arctic Ale. And that beer, or that review, actually wasn't a review. That uh, fight, as I like to call them, is on my channel. Uh, I can't remember what playlist I put it on, but you can find it if you dig deep enough. I did it last year in 2019, and and as much as I love Einstock Arctic Ale, and I'm still going to drink Einstock Arctic Ale, uh, you know, from time to time, it's just a beer I have to go back to. I still loved that iteration of Cold Snap, which was the original recipe, and the original recipe is in that video. Um, I'm not sure how good I was at describing that beer. It's been a while since I recorded that video. Um, but if you're just interested in the original recipe, in fact, I have a, I think I have a bottle here in my cabinet. Yeah. So there's been three labels of Cold Snap. And here is the second label of Cold Snap. Uh, this was the original recipe. Um, this one will be spiced. I'm just coming off the Belgian, or excuse me, the Blue Moon Belgian White review. And, and I just hit this review, you know, drank a little glass of water and, and I'm hitting this review. Uh, so that, that beer was not brewed with spices, at least to my knowledge. And this beer is even says so on the bottle. Even says so on the new bottle. 5.3% alcohol. How much was this one? 5.3%. So, so they didn't tweak the ABV uh, in either iteration. Um, but this one, they um, they put tins, fruits, spices, and florals in here, along with the orange notes, a touch of vanilla, and smooth. You know, it creates smooth sweetness. I'm sure there's coriander in here. I know there's rose nibs in here. There's powdered plum in here. The plum has uh, been their secret ingredient, in my opinion, that won me over. I will never forget the first time I tried a cold snap. It was in the Applebee's right above, right, you know, right down the road from me. I uh, got it fresh on tap. Uh, I never had it before, and it just blew me away. I thought it was blueberry at first. Uh, it does come off as a little blueberry. If you're not completely familiar with plum, um, but man, oh man, is was that a good beer? I have had this new recipe, and I'm hoping, hoping like hell, my opinions change tonight with a formal review. I drank one bottle of this and a friend. Shout out to Juice. Go follow his YouTube channel, Juice's Brew and Q. Uh, if you're into competition barbecue or just barbecue in general, uh, 
He's got a great channel for that. You know, he's not knocking you juice. You know, he's not uh, completely consistent with the videos. Neither am I. That's why I try to keep up a two two week backlog of, of videos. Um, you know, life gets in the way, but he does post content. Uh, he does compete, and uh, he's got great content. But yeah. Uh, and his channel, uh, a link to his channel is in my uh, featured videos um, on my homepage if you're interested in barbecue. But yeah, he had the Cold Snap in his fridge. I had it there. Uh, it's his all-time favorite beer as well. And he still, in fact, he thinks they improved on the recipe. Um, I just don't want to say anything out loud. I don't, I don't want to speak anything positive or negative over this beer until I've sat down and had a formal review of this beer and, and that's what I'm, I'm doing here I'm just really nervous about trying this beer for the second time just because I know it's not the original recipe that I love so much so here we go. Head retention, uh, not really great. It's dissipating pretty fast. It's a pearly white head though. Uh, it comes off as kind of dish soapy uh, in consistency, but that thing, that head disappears and goes away pretty freaking quick. Um, I said this in the Blue Moon uh, review, um, so you'll already know this if you watched it, but wind mirrors are typically unfiltered. Uh, this is, a, it's it's a little clear. I'd say this is more on the murky side, like a heavy murk, not quite haze. I have my own custom uh, clarity. I don't know if there's a clarity scale, and if there is, somebody please direct me to it so I can stop sounding like a, a Neanderthal. But I've just created my own vocabulary, my own custom uh clarity scale ranging from clear to murky then to full on haze um well and then the last would be something like a scout like cannot see through it at all complete motor oil or something um yeah this is more of like heavy murk not quite hazy um bubbles going on you know pretty volatile um not yeah, they tend to filter this one a little bit, so does the Einstock. So there's not as much sediment in here. I think that's what contributes to the little bit of clarity in here as well. Uh, comes off as a uh, just a really nice, rich gold color, as are most wit beers. Um, let's get into the aroma. So I'm getting, I'm getting the plum, I'm getting, there's just a lot going on here, you know, that they put so much into this beer now, I'm probably, I mean, there's 10 fruits, spices, and florals in here, am, am I going to get all of that? No. I do get a little bit of that plum and citrusy, so, so I get the, the fruit component of it. I feel like I feel like I'm getting some of the the brugginess. That's a, that's one thing that really sticks out in this particular wit beer. The the wheat uh, and bready quality of the beer uh, stands out. I'm, I feel like I'm getting some floral. I don't think I'm getting any spices. Yeah, I think. I don't know. It's just so much going on in this beer. I do get a little bit of floral, a little bit of fruitiness. Again, that being the citrus and plum, not something crazy like a banana or a berry or, or something of that nature. Um, maybe there's a little bit of spicy, uh, spices in here on the aroma, but that bread comes in as well and kind of plays with the spices. So it's, it's hard for me to distinguish one from the other. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm apprehensive to try this beer, but it is the best part of a beer review, so let's go on and get through with it.
This beer straight up reminds me of Fruity Pebbles. They're such a bright, sharp fruit complexity to this. And the flavor, the flavor lingers. This beer lingers hard on the palate. It is so bright. It is very crisp. Very crisp. Um, I feel like people, and I'm not knocking anybody out here on in YouTube um, that does this. This is just my personal thing. I feel like as a collective, as a whole, nobody specific. We throw around clean, crisp, refreshing, way too loose. Um, to me, clean is how clear the beer looks. Is there any sediment in here? What's the viscosity of this beer? You know, the the the, the ppm. What's the ppm in this beer? How 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 thick it is on the mouthfeel? That's clean to me. Crisp is more of the combination factor, um, and and the, the the drying aspect of it. You know, how quick is it drying in my mouth? How prickly is the carbonation? That's crisp to me. And refreshing means to me, and not to anybody else, this isn't the gospel. It just helps me make sense of that phrase, crisp, clean, refreshing. Clean, crisp, refreshing, however you want to say it. Refreshing refers to the water. You know, is the water featured in the beer? Because a heavily watered featured beer doesn't mean that it's watered down, but it adds a refreshing quality that almost makes you feel beer is not hydrating. There is science to back that up. Even though I love beer and I'm going to drink it out in the sun till the day I die, and I will toast everyone out here uh, <laughs> who drinks beer in this in the hot summer sun. Um, but beer is not hydrating to the body. There's science to prove that. So. Um, it just gives the illusion of hydrating. It gives the illusion of refreshment, uh, the, the water component of the beer. Um, so yeah, that's what clean, uh, cr clean, crisp, refreshing means to me. And so this is not clean, but this is crisp. It is a drying beer. There is no carbonation on here. This beer is pretty flat in terms of that. Um, but when uh, when I refer to a beer as being flat, I'm, I'm not comparing it to say a flat soda. I just mean there's no carbonation in here. You know, alcoholic beverages um, require a different uh, profile than than a soda does. And then I do feel like it is refreshing. I don't feel like water is the main feature in this beer. But it is thin enough, I think, to have a refreshing, hydrating quality that, that fits it into that lawnmower category. A lot of coriander in here, along with that fruit. The spices, the coriander. Um, I feel like are playing really nicely together and then kind of the bedrock of the beer which usually tends to be the bedrock of most wit beers is the wheat the, the grain the malt um, it definitely has a bready component uh, to it Now, do I taste the, the, there's rose nibs in here, rose buds, rose hips, I don't know what they're called. There's something to do with the rose plant in here, again with the 10 other spots. Do I taste everything in here? No, I don't. Um, but I do I taste a general floral coriander, a general weedy, malty bedrock, a, a general fruity, you know, the plum, the citrus, so I'm getting everything as advertised in one package here. Um, I'm 
I'm going to go straight for the, the rating here. That's what my awkward pause was about. I just, there's just so much sentimentality with this beer and me. Um, so I'll get into recommendations after the rating. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and give this a 4.5 out of the 5. In my opinion, this, this was the perfect beer. Um, for me anyways. I, if you disagree, that's wonderful. Put it in the comments below. Why do you like this beer better? Why did you not like this beer? Why did you like this beer better and not this beer? You know, open discussion people, that's part of this channel. Um, I, personally though, I feel like this was the perfect beer and they messed with it. It wasn't broken and they tried to fix it. And am I mad at Sam Adams for that? No, I'm not mad at Sam Adams for that. Um, I've discovered quite a few other f perfect beers now. There is no longer the one perfect, the one perfect beer for me in the world anymore. Uh, however, uh, this was the last year I was drinking Cold Snap from January to July. Nothing but Cold Snap. Um, I was buying every single bottle of Cold Snap I could find in Decatur. I raided Publix. I raided Mapco. Uh, I bought it from Top Shelf, I believe. Went to several gas stations that I knew carried it. I had Cold Snap everywhere in my fridge last year. And little did I know, it was the last year I was ever going to drink that original recipe. Uh, and, and so I'm really glad I did that. Um, so I think I think my love affair with Cold Snap is over. I, I really do. Um, the original recipe is still my all-time favorite beer. But uh, this beer, I, just, I feel like they fixed, they tried to fix something. Uh, that wasn't broken. It's a little too bright for me. That that is um, that is where I do not like this this particular recipe. Um, I think I think I understand why they tried to fix it. I think maybe there was a fluctuation in sales. Maybe. And so they went for more brighter flavor, um, less beer character to appeal to the masses and maybe get the sales back up. I don't know how Cold Snap is doing. Uh, I don't read the sales figures. I don't, I don't listen to quarterly reports of Sam Adams. I don't know. That's just me talking out of my head. But that's the only reason I could fathom them tweaking, um, tweaking Cold Snap. I think they also tweaked Summer Ale. I think I think they uh, changed Summer Ale as well. That's another beer I really liked. wasn't a perfect beer for me. I really loved the original S Summer Ale, and I think they tweaked that as well. Uh, they I don't think they've touched Oktoberfest or Winter Lager when it comes to the uh, four seasonals that Sam Adams put out. Um, but fortunately, they touched Cold Snap, and uh, I can't say I'm not a fan. It's still a solid A beer. They just messed with something that I loved, and and I just have a hard time uh, getting on board with, with that. Um, I think this is a still a great uh, beer for beginners, uh, for people trying to get away from macro loggers. Uh, for wit beer fans, I think uh, Cold Snap is one of the more unique. Uh, wit beers out there in the world. I've had enough wit beers. I haven't had them all. I've had over 10 or 15 different wit beers, so I've had enough to say this is a pretty unique um, wit beer. I feel like the plum sets this apart from any other wit beer out there. Even their other wit beer, which would be White Christmas, you'll see a review of that coming up in the future. Hashtag seasonal drinking is for losers. Um, and so, yeah. That's just my thoughts on it. Uh, rec again, recommendations, uh, beginners, wit beer fans. Uh, if if you're if you like really fruity stuff like like a fruit ale, or you're into a sour. Now this isn't sour at all. This has no sour uh, character to it. But if you're like the really fruity sours, 
but you also drink other beers too. You don't just swear by the, the puckering factor. Uh, maybe try Cold Snap. If you like lawnmower beers, if you do like Bud Miller Coors, give Cold Snap a try. Maybe this will sway you into what craft beer has to offer down the road. Um, so yeah, that that's where I'm at. I feel like like up at the opposite end of the spectrum. If if you need a hot bomb, if you're into the the bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout that's 16% ABV, don't pick up Cold Snap. If you're into the Quad IPA. I don't know, 150 IBU beer kind of guy. Don't pick up Cold Snap. But, you know, a few beginners out there, you macro lager lovers, you lawnmower beer lovers, you wit beer lovers, Cold Snap uh, could be for you. Uh, Juice, I'm sorry. I don't feel the same way as you when you watch this. It's just my feelings. They tweaked something. They fixed something that I didn't feel was broken. Uh, but until next time, guys, that wraps this up. Sam Adams Cold Snap, my first ever review of a Cold Snap beer. I can't believe it, it being my favorite brewery. Uh, 4.5 out of 5. Until next time, guys. Cheers.